Hi everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel where we're covering everything business, property and personal wealth. And in this video, I wanna talk about a really popular principle in wealth which is paying yourself first or some people call it the profit first principle. Now this isn't mine, it's a very well known and common principle but most people get it wrong. So first of all, what does it actually mean paying yourself first? Because surely if you've got a salary or a business that's paying out, you're paying yourself first, right? Well, no. Actually, the whole principle of paying yourself first or profit first is about your savings and long-term investment model, but most people get it wrong. So originally, this came from a book called The Richest Man in Babylon, and if you haven't read this, it is one of the best personal finance books that you will ever read, um, basically talking about a very real-world situation in Babylon and becoming the richest person in the world, with Babylon being well-known as one of the wealthiest parts of the world at that point in time. So in The Richest Man of Babylon, what they talk about is these principles of how you allocate your funding. And one of them is about paying your investments first. So whatever you get paid, you put 10% immediately aside. And then what you do, if you've got any creditors, you put 20% towards that. And then you live off of 70% of what you're earning. The difference is, back then, is a lot of your costs were variable costs, whereas a lot of costs now are fixed costs, which I'll touch on in a moment. But if you apply that same principle without factoring in those fixed costs, you're gonna have a lot of problems that you come up against. So whilst these books are really good to recalibrate and realign the way you think about assets versus liabilities with rich dad, poor dad, or of course the profit first um, principle or paying yourself first principle from the richest man in Babylon, but you need to alter it into the 21st century and what you can apply today. And I'm gonna take you through some really simple steps that you need to do this with. So before we jump into the rest of the content, make sure to hit the like button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm, push this content to more people like yourself. And of course, if this is one of the first times you've ever watched a video by myself and you're interested in property, finance, health, wealth, and happiness, make sure to hit the subscribe button and of course the notification bell to make sure you're one of the first people notified in the next video. So. Point number one, before you do anything and you look about paying yourself first, you need to understand your fixed liability. So what are fixed liabilities? Fixed liabilities are the fixed positions that you found yourself in that you can't really change at a moment's notice. Okay, so this would more than likely be your house. Okay, that's the most obvious one. The place that you're buying and you've bought and you've paying a mortgage on or the place that you're renting. And of course, normally a car. So uh, a lot of people, including myself, will lease a lot of cars or their vehicle that they're driving around on a day-by-day -day basis. Um, if that is you, that will go into your fixed column. And you need to understand exactly what that is to the penny on every single month. Number two is understand your variable liabilities. So your variable liabilities are the things that you have some element of control over. So this can be a lot of your bills. I know that your water and things like that are fixed, but you can control and lower your cost of electrics and gas um, by changing suppliers, being more efficient and effective with when you're using your heating, etc. cetera. Um, but things like your fuel would come onto that. And of course, a really big one are your spending habits and of course your consumption, i.e. your food spend. And what this is gonna be important by is when we get to the next step is understanding where you can restrict yourself for the deferred gratification and compound effects of investment. Number three is understanding how can you cut these fixed and variable costs that you're going to. And a lot of you at this point will go, oh no, I can't, I can't possibly, you know. And the amount of times I'll talk to people, and it's not just people that are earning a lower income, by the way, if you're in the teens and things like that, even if you're earning 30 grand, I know people that are spending on their household, their mortgage, um, their car, their bills, etc., over £3,000 a month. And if you ask them, they are fixed on, no, that's just what it is around here. No, it's not. It doesn't have to be at all. I get it if you have a, you know, if you've got a wife, a husband, a partner, maybe a couple of kids, you're not going to be wanting to leave, uh, live in a spare room somewhere, okay? I get that. But ultimately, if you don't have the financial discipline, don't expect to increase your wealth over the long term. So have a look at your fixed assets, okay? If you're living in a house that is, uh, say, a three-bed semi-detached property. I live in a three-bed semi-detached. I don't live in a ridiculous house. I live in a 
really nice part of town. But if I couldn't afford to live there, I know I could buy the same house in a less desirable but still okay area of Yorkshire for about a third, if not a quarter of the price that I've paid for the one where I am. Okay, so just be aligned to what you're earning. You don't, I get that when people want aspirational houses or to live in aspirational locations or aspirational vehicles, but ultimately, if you haven't earned to that threshold yet, don't overextend yourself. Most people's financial downfalls aren't actually due to what they're earning, it's the lifestyle that they surround themselves with. So, people that are earning 20,000 pound a year can be much better off financially than some people earning 40,000 a year and it's all down to their financial discipline. But before you start looking at paying yourself first, you need to understand those three core principles that you can take on. Understanding your fixed liabilities, understanding your variable liabilities and then cutting down and attacking on both. Now this is where you actually get to paying yourself first. Now what I recommend is allocating 10%, I'm going to tell you exactly how you do this, allocating 10% at a minimum of £100 of your net pay. A majority of you watching this will be getting £1,000 a month plus net pay. Okay, I imagine all of you, unless you've not started working yet, okay? so. The way that you do this is when your money comes in, this is why it was so important doing those first three steps, by the way, because a lot of you, and it's okay if you're one of these, will notice you are getting paid 2,000 a month and your outgoings are 2,100 pounds and you cannot work how work out how you're surviving each month. That's completely normal and the first thing you need to do is attack those down. So let's assume you're getting 1,500 pounds net per month. As an absolute minimum, what I would do is when I get that 1,500, you take 10%, which is 150 pounds, and you get it out of your bank account immediately. Maybe you have something if you're with Monzo or any other bank, you can set up a separate bank like that just by calling your bank. Um, or if you're with one of the um, modern ones like Monzo, um, um, Tide, Metro, places like that, you can set it up on your app in literally minutes, okay? And then you get it out there because of what happens with your psychology um, with money is if it is there, you will spend it. It's kind of like, what's the easiest way to stay strict to a diet? Well, take away your temptation. It's all about willpower. The easiest way to have great willpower is to not test it in the first place. If you're on a diet, you get crap food out of your cupboards and in the bin, right? It's the same with money management. If you want to control your finances, take it out of your hands. Okay, if you have 90% of your money to live on, you can do that. If you earn a thousand pounds and you live off a thousand pounds, you can live off 900. You really can. If you've got two grand, you can live off 1800. And just trust me, just do it for yourself. And what tends to happen is the first couple of months of doing this, you'll get too much month at the end of the money. Okay. The truth is you've been doing that all your life, right? Most of us live paycheck to paycheck. So force it out of your bank account. And then what happens is towards the end of the month, you'll get to like the 22nd, the 23rd, and you'll go, oh crap, I've only got 50 quid left for the rest of the month. And then what tends to happen is your food shop will change in that last week. You won't get takeaways. You won't get the expensive stuff. Maybe you'll get as the price chicken for a week, you know, whatever it is. But slowly but surely, what you'll do is you'll alter your habits and very quickly, 900 pounds or with the 1,500, 1,350 pounds will become the new norm of what goes in your account and you will manage by it. Very quickly, you'll soon forget, if you can set it up automatically, by the way, just have the direct debit coming out a few days after your money comes in, you'll start forgetting that even happens. And if you put that into something like a stocks and share ISA or something like that, that is following an index fund of some kind, very easy to set up within Hargreaves Lansdowne or something like that, you will not notice the money going out. But when you check it a couple of years later and you see that you've been adding to this and building it up, you will be shocked at how much that deferred gratification and that compound interest effect has really had an impact on your wealth. So look, this was a really short video. I didn't want this to be a long one. It's a really simple principle that you can start attacking right now. The thing that I didn't mention that is really important is 
Do you have bad debt? Okay, now this is really important. Once you've taken that 10% and you're putting it into your stocks and shares ISA or a separate cash bank account just so you can get used to saving, you need to ask yourself, do I have any bad debt? Now, there's different definitions of this, but I would look at your debt, anything above 10% interest, okay? Um, and then you once you've chipped away at that, anything above 5% interest. So number one's going to be your unarranged overdrafts okay any overdrafts that aren't arranged are going to be costing you like 10 pound a day no matter how much over you are chip away at that and get that paid off first number two is going to be credit cards get rid of it okay people get sucked in with the zero percent and then let it get out of control and then suddenly you're paying 30 percent a year chip away at that get your bad debt under wraps and this might take some time okay and then start investing and then as you earn more money carry, carry on with the 10 percent principle and drawing out and adding into that it's really going to impact your psychology in many ways first of all you're going to have a savers and investor as focus which is going to give you an abundance mindset instead of a scarcity mindset number two psychologically you're much you've got much more willpower and self-control and discipline and dedication around your finances right now which is going to play out in other areas of your life you're also going to be adapting and taking on fiscal responsibility which is really going to impact the way you see the rest of the world and is also going to dramatically impact other people around you so if you've got kids um, or people that are looking to you as a role model the better that you're managing this it's really going to impact them as well and finally and best of all is i call this getting your oxygen so you can survive but not really thrive when you're really worried about your finances and what having this buffer is there for and also this investment mentality is it gives you peace of mind okay did you know over 50 percent of us don't have a thousand pounds or americans have thousand dollars sat there if anything went wrong how crazy is that if you had something that could be your boiler going and amid over half of us don't have a thousand pounds sat there to sort that problem out and it just gives you peace of mind it gives you your oxygen it gets your muscles flooded and your mindset ready to attack the day in the right way i really hope that's been helpful again it's not meant to be a long video i don't need to drag it out i hope it's added value to you and if you're interested in finding out more about mindset business and wealth especially around property investment and scaling your portfolio and your business then this is definitely the channel for you and i'd really appreciate it as i said before by hitting the like button it massively helps with the youtube algorithm and of course if you're interested in more make sure to hit the subscribe button and of course the bell that comes up next to it so that you are one of the first people notified for the next video coming out i'll see you in the next video